Jurgen Klopp will arguably go down as one of football's greatest ever managers. Why? Many people will say it's because of his footballing tactics and the players that have played in his teams, but that only scratches the surface. So what is it that sets him apart from all the other coaches? And how can you adopt a mindset similar to his? Well, in this video, I'm gonna to reveal to you the five things that have made him one of the greatest coaches in sport right now. And if you're a player or coach, that wants to be what Jurgen Klopp describes as a mentality monster, you're gonna wanna hang around. So let's dive in. After an 11 year career playing at Mainz, he instantly turned to managing the club, securing promotion into Bundesliga after three years in charge. Following a relegation a few years later, he made the move to Dortmund, where he began to cement his place in managerial greatness, where he won back-to-back -back Bundesliga titles, as well as making the Champions League final. But in 2015, he went to another level, moving to Liverpool, where he has since won the Champions League, UEFA Super Cup, FIFA Club World Cup, the English Premier League, FA Cup and League Cup. And while he has the success on the field, there's something that transcends the game, an approach and mindset that leaves players and fans overcome with emotion, as well as finding this ultimate glory. Where many believe that in order to be successful requires you to be a bad guy, a taskmaster and superior, Jurgen Klopp breaks the mold. His mindset is built on not only a high performance IQ, but a high EQ, emotional intelligence. And the way he does that is through these five things. Number one, by creating a safe environment. Players who are exposed to an environment of fear often experience poor performance. And Klopp understands this. He sets out with what he expects from his players and staff and he then gives them the autonomy to make their own decisions. Psychological safety was coined by Amy Emerson, a professor at Harvard Business School in 1999, which explains an environment that is built on the belief that you won't be punished or humiliated for bringing up concerns, mistakes, ideas, or questions. And an environment like this allows players to thrive rather than survive. It moves from old traditional leadership methods that are known as transactional, where you use rewards and punishments to achieve goals and is seen as a more reactive style in nature. And you move to a more transformational leadership style, which is based around people, focuses on motivation and is proactive. Transformational leadership is built on more than just success and outcomes and creates an environment that creates deeper meaning and connection with the people. This style of leadership is what Klopp uses, that he can create a psychologically safe environment for his players. It allows them to reduce their fear that can be holding them back from their performance. And a way Klopp does this is through number two, putting people first. Klopp's leadership style is based on putting people first. He believes that you can have world-class talent, but if no one is on the same page, then it counts for nothing. Klopp's assistant manager once said, Klopp creates a family. He always says 30% tactics and 70% team building. Putting the team first, building relationships and forming understanding allows for tactics to flourish second. And that's why you see top tier teams purchasing player after player, not getting the results because they've missed this missing piece. The players struggle to connect with each other and leads to misunderstandings on the field and ultimately mistakes. Klopp understands implicitly that belonging and connection are essential factors in high performing teams. So how does he do this? He connects. For example, on more than one occasion, Klopp has been known to take the entire team and staff away on holiday. Everyone knows the name of each member of staff and with fans, he is known for his unique celebrations with them to connect on a deeper level. He also uses fun. He once reportedly gave a Champions League final speech in Cristiano Ronaldo branded underwear. This then reportedly broke the ice and removed that tension that was in the room for a, such a high pressure environment. And because Klopp knew this, he wanted the players to relax, even if it came at the expense of a few laughs towards him. But all of this requires a deep understanding of all the people in the room, and he does this through his open communication. Klopp is known as a confident leader with someone who has laser focus on the tactical side of football. But Klopp once described his job as helping 11 players do the right things in the right moments. To achieve this, he has to treat each player as individuals, and he does this through one-to-one -one check ins Rather than distancing himself from the players, he gets closer. He finds deeper connections, understanding both sides of the story so he can build greater relationships with his players. And this level of communication allows him to do number three, which is invest emotionally. Elite sport is a numbers game and professional sport even more so. With the thought of losing players moving from team to team and grieving their loss, 
Many coaches will distance themselves, be cold, and put it down to it just being what they would describe as the job. But Klopp goes a different way. He invests emotionally. He motivates with emotion, and he also shows what the players mean to him. He doesn't see himself as superior, and by connecting on an emotional level, he opens the door for them to open up to him as well. And this spills out onto his enthusiastic celebrations on the pitch. Or even when the final whistle goes, you can see him going onto the pitch and rather than giving a handshake, he's seen hugging his players each one by one. Liverpool forward Roberto Firmino said, he motivates us in different way every day. And Klopp said, I live 100% for the boys and what we do at the club. Investing emotionally and having emotional intelligence into players isn't a weakness, it's a strength. It's about understanding yourself, others' experiences that can lead to better relationships, well-being, and ultimately performance. And if you want to develop your emotional intelligence, be sure to check out the MindStrong Sport app, the mental gym to build your mental strength using meditations, exercises, and so much more to blend performance psychology and mindfulness to take your mental performance to another level. And you can get your exclusive subscription offer via the link in the description of this video. But on to number four, which is being positive. Klopp has become well known for his attacking style of football, a style known as Gagan pressing, a counter-attacking style of football that has been adopted by many of the world's leading coaches, such as Guardiola, Tuchel, Pochettino, to name a few. This style of football involves by where the ball is lost, the team instantly swarms the opposition, creating pressure, confusion, and ultimately mistakes to win the ball back while the team is at their most vulnerable to attack. But when you've created an environment built on trust, connection, and invested emotionally in each other, it allows you to break free of those shackles of fear and play with freedom. And even when those tough moments do happen, he still finds a way to be positive off the field. Jordan Henderson talks about after losing the Europa Cup final and the Carabao Cup final in the same year, when the players went back to the hotel with their tails between their legs wanting to go to bed, Klopp asked them, why are you so miserable? And said to the players, this is just the start. This is the beginning. Eventually, he had them up on the table singing and dancing, enjoying the night with each other. He knew that he needed everyone together in order to move on from a setback, learn from it, get better and go again. And this all comes from finally, number five, learning from mistakes. Many athletes fear failure due to high expectations and standards and the idea of making a mistake could cause many sleepless nights. But the truth is that those at the very top, they fail over and over again. It's a part of the process. Thomas Edison, the inventor of a light bulb, once said, I have not failed 10,000 times. I've successfully found 10,000 ways that will not work. This perspective allows us to move from seeing failure as something that it says about us to it being more about us moving one step closer towards the success and understanding how to create it. Klopp himself says each missed chance is not a failure, that it is information and use it and go again. He knows that players are high achievers and that they're not going to want to make mistakes and that fear of failure can cripple them. But if you can embrace it and see it as a way of finding information and learnings, then you can become better and find success faster. And instead of increasing their fear of failure by being hard, he uses his connection and his emotion with the players to reduce that fear of failure, embrace mistakes, stays positive in the face of setbacks, and always looks for the positive option. So there you have it, five mindset lessons from one of the greatest coaches on the planet. Lessons that if you implement them right now, you or your team will find your way to success. But if you wanna improve your mental strategies and build a stronger mindset right now, then head over to this video straight away.